Jennifer Harris Requejo joins us now live from New York. Welcome to the News Hour. Um, what is all of this doing to children psychologically? So, thank you for the question. Um, the report that we are launching tomorrow for World Children's Day says that approximately 70% of mental health services for children and adolescents have been disrupted. As you know, uh, most many children are at home, they're not in school, and um, this has created a lot more anxiety, particularly for adolescents, in terms of um, not having access to peers, uh, not being able to get the kinds of social support that they may have, have received before through schools and other kinds of programs, and increased anxiety about their, their futures. So um, those are some of the issues that are affecting children and adolescents terms of their mental health and psychological well-being. And in a number of countries, the uh, reopening of schools has actually increased the numbers of new infections. So how do you find uh, that balance uh, between a child's needs and increased COVID transmission? Yes, thank you for the question. UNICEF is still is a strong supporter of um, children being able to go back to school. Uh, clearly, that needs to be done in a safe manner. Um, so that they are not at risk and that teachers and their parents are not at risk of the transmission that can happen in a school environment. Um, clearly, what we need is um, for children who are not able to be in a school setting to have access to online training or alternative methods so that they are not left behind. Um, and I think this is a critical balance because Clearly, the longer the pandemic goes on and children are out of school, it raises questions of some of them never returning um, and also just delays in learning and, and other kinds of things. So I think the balance is, is really critical and that uh, all efforts should be made to try and ensure that children can get back into schooling in a safe manner and that those that are lacking access to um, digital technologies that we work on improving um, those that are being left behind in that regard as well. And on that point about um, digital technology, I remember reading the story of a father in India in a rural part that sold his last cow to buy his daughter a tablet. You know, these are real examples, real challenges in rural areas. No, maybe even no Wi-Fi probably. So what happens then? So I think there's a, we have a collective responsibility to try and increase access um, so that families aren't put in such hardship, as you're saying, of, of selling assets so that their children have access to the needed technology. Um, there needs to be local level solutions to these kinds of issues. So, for example, in that situation in India, um, perhaps some local organizations can um, band together to try and uh, look at what the situation is for children and how many are without um, without any sort of tablet or other form of connection and try and address that right there on the, on the ground. And then, of course, it goes all the way up to the higher levels of government where they need to start taking a look at what um, the funding flows are to the education sector and innovations that they can introduce so that there's universal access. Senior advisor at UNICEF, Jennifer Harris-Requejo, thank you so much for your time today on the News Hour. Appreciate it.